Dobar dan ljudi, guten tag, bonjour. Ovdje u French German Connection dvorani. Jeste dobro ljudi? Ovaj dan nekako brzo, brzo, brzo prolazi, a kada je krenulo, bilo nam je, vjerujem, svima teško. Stoga da skratim, najavu na redu je posljednji govornik u ovoj našoj dvorani danas, kojega jedva čekamo čuti. Dakle, i on je Njemac, drugi Njemac po redu u ovoj, da ponovimo, jer ponavljanje je majka znanja, French German Connection dvorani. On je osnivač Međunarodnog festivala Graffiti Meeting of Styles, koji ujedinjuje i spaja umjetnike i ljubitelje umjetnosti diljem svijeta. Pokrenu ga je sada već davne, 2002. godine, u svome rodnome Vizbadenu. U njegovom ćemo izlaganju čuti njegovu priču koja je počela 1984. godine kada se, kako on sam kaže, zarazio virusom hip-hopa, počeo se baviti breakdanceom i počeo je tegati, naravno, ali čućemo i cijelu priču oko ovoga festivala koji je u ovih, evo, 16 godina doživio preko 300 svojih izdanja diljem svijeta. Dame i gospodo, pozdravimo ga veliki pljevskom, on je Manuel Gerulis. Bite zdjeo. Thank you. Hvala. Ja, my name is Manuel Gerulis. I'm from Wiesbaden, Germany. And I have the pleasure to be part of a worldwide movement and to give you impressions about graffiti culture, its history, and how I was able to start a worldwide movement. And um, I will start first with a short video of approximately five minutes, which will summarize the event, the mind behind the event, and uh, how it started. <clears throat> and um, after I will give you Uh, some information about uh, hip-hop culture and graffiti, and then we will come to the festival itself. The youth is the future, and in order to create future and have a better life and a better planet in the future, we got to start with the youth and teach them the right incentives and the right goals. It's not about only making money and driving big cars, it's about doing something positive. And therefore, I think we need to change our political and economy system, which right now is putting the money, the financial and the capital on top, and the people are there to work for the money, but it should be the other way around. Money is only a tool in order to make life better. And this is what we got to realize and put on top is the people, the, the, the individual, the person. The Meeting of Styles is a project that started back in my city in Wiesbaden near Frankfurt back in uh, 1996 with uh, the availability of a huge area that used uh, to be a slaughter place back in the 80s. Then it was abandoned and very soon the local graffiti scene discovered the place to paint legal. So through the years they established very fast and then mid of the 90s plans of the city council got public to tear down the area so we said we have to do something about it and created the Wall Street meeting to put an accent for the interest of young people to express themselves and uh, since 97 to 2001 we did the biggest graffiti hip-hop jams uh, through entire Europe in Wiesbaden And then in late 2001, the city started to tear down the area, so we said, okay, we got to keep it alive and uh, spread it across Europe and uh, actually across the world. So since 2002, the meeting of styles has grown among many countries throughout the world, through Europe, Russia, over the United States, Canada, Brazil, Mexico. Life can be a dream, it's just in your hands. You gotta, you know, take it and create it and do it the way you think is right. 
So, you know, the dream and the potential, the creative potential is within every individual. You just need to go for it and believe in it. And this is the big challenge. You can get put to sleep I think it's very important that uh, young people have the free space to express themselves, to be creative, because uh, if there is no space, young people do other things. So at least, I would say, uh, politics and the uh, system has uh, two choices, either creative young people or criminal young people. But if you prefer creative young people, then give free space to express themselves. Because, uh, you know, in, in the solidarity of society, I think young people uh, also have rights, not only duties to go work and pay taxes and all these things. People need to live also, and uh, I think it's part of uh, the desire and uh, of human being to express yourself through diverse media. So I see the uh, anti graffiti politics, I see uh, very negative because they always focus on the bad sides of graffiti, what they see consider as bad sides, but don't realize the good sides of it. But if you want to make sure that the drama is free, I seen brothers talk slow like Muhammad Ali after getting mashed out by Masia 3. Come to find out it's all about some Punani. It's like them jokers ain't had nothing better to do. She was a plug, you ain't had nothing better to screw. Should have stayed with two years, she was better for you. For the infidel, I guess it's inevitable. E noi ragazzi ci piace portare i cammelli e ci piace portarli su e giù per il nostro posto. Deve dire lo stai, no? Dai, dai, lui è bravo, cioè io, lui ne ha fatti un sotto. Non perde la faccia. Meeting of Style è una convention dove si ritrovano tutti i writer sia d'Italia che provenienti dall'estero. È una convention, una tappe, nel senso che viene fatta in molti paesi d'Europa e anche negli Stati Uniti. Ciao, sono Rode, vengo da Vicenza e sono qui per il Meeting of Style. Loris, eh, questi sono i miei amici, gli over spin. Siamo tuoi amici. <ride> ecco, non sono miei amici. Meeting of Style è una gran figata, una bella cosa, insomma, una bella occasione per dipingere, fare un po' di disegni insieme insomma lo stile dell'overspin insomma diciamo si riconosce da per la pulizia de, delle lettere dai 3D e dalla grafica originale io sono Spazio faccio parte della cremeria la cremeria è un gruppo di writer del Veneto e del Friuli 10-11 persone siamo un gruppo misto ognuno fa cose differenti e siamo ben amalgamati perché ci sono diversi, diversi stili e riusciamo a inglobarli bene. Io sono Curdo delle AD di Padova. E questo è il meeting del 2008. Gli altri, perlomeno fino adesso in Italia, li abbiamo organizzati noi come EAD a Padova. Un evento internazionale nato in Germania da Mainz, che da i vecchi writer tedeschi, tedeschi, sì. So, uh, yeah, everybody uh, from you knows graffiti. You see it every day. You see it uh, on the freeway when you ride the car. You see it on the train lines. But uh, this is the modern graffiti phenomena. Actually, graffiti, you know, is as old as humankind. The first graffiti writers have been the guys in the caves, painting the caves. Maybe back then somebody was there and said, well, get out of my cave. This is mine. You're vandalizing my cave. Could be. We don't know. 
But um, yeah, the modern graffiti phenomena, the way we know, is part of hip hop culture. And um, the, it started actually back in the late 60s in the poor neighborhoods in Philadelphia and New York with teenagers scribbling their names on walls. Uh, f um, commonly known as the I was here syndrome. And um, these guys have been writing their names all over the neighborhoods to mark the territories and to put a sign that they are part of the neighborhood. So it got really big in the late 60s and um, made the jump on the New York subways. Uh, maybe some of you know from movies from the 80s how the New York subway used to look like. Like all trains were painted, whole cars, window downs. Some of the wagons were totally covered in paint. And um, so, yeah, then came the hip hop movement. At the beginning, it was uh, actually different uh, medias. It was um, break dancing, rapping, DJing, and graffiti. And uh, they all developed kind of parallel. And um, back then at the time, there was also a lot of um, youth crime, gang violence, uh, teenagers fighting each other with weapons, bats, guns, knives about territory. And uh, then in New York was uh, one incident that um, one guy got killed and uh, it led to one big peace meeting where all the major gangs from the Bronx came together to settle a peace treaty. And uh, one of the guys in this peace treaty was Africa Bambata, who's the founder of the Zulu Nation. And um, during this peace meeting, he kind of like brought all the different medias, breakdancing, graffiti, DJing, and rapping, brought it together and said, well, let's call it hip hop. The kids in the ghetto need something positive. Uh, if you maybe uh, know how the Bronx and those neighborhoods in the 80s used to look like, kind of like Germany after the Second World War, totally destroyed and abandoned. You have a question? No. Okay, you may ask me questions anytime. Just wave, put up the arm. So, um, yeah, a lot of these kids, like mostly minorities, like Latinos, Puerto Ricans, black kids, they didn't have any perspectives, any tools, any way to uh, be creative and be constructive. And uh, then came the hip-hop culture, and it led that, um, to the result that all the gang violence uh, declined, it got less and less because now the kids were not fighting each other, they were battling each other. They were dancing against each other, they were spray painting against each other, and uh, it led to a big, big movement that uh, got over to Europe like early in the 80s uh, with the movie called Wild Style which was actually co-financed by the German ZDF because uh, the makers of the film didn't find no funds in the United States. So somehow they got funded by the ZDF and could realize the movie. And the movie is uh, like a documentary movie with uh, a plot and uh, describes very well about hip hop culture, like the impact for the kids, how the, the ghettos used to look like, and what it brought to those poor ghetto kids. And um, this movie came over to Germany late 83, was the first time of screening, and then 84 again. And uh, this was the time when I was infected with hip hop culture. The first thing that I've seen was like kids breakdancing, doing all these crazy moves spinning on the hat, doing windmill, doing all that floor rock, all these crazy things. And uh, that inspired me. I was 13 at that time in 84, and I was very curious about it. So I found out about the movie with my friend, and um, we started to tag. We got funky names like Magic Space and Magic Rhythm, and uh, we started with little markers, writing our names on the walls. And um, well, from there, it got bigger and bigger. The markers got bigger, we got like big markers, and then 86, we started with spray can. Back at that time, there were no legal spots, so 
the only way to spray paint was like go on the train tracks, go to abandoned buildings, find your own little corners and just practice. So yeah, and then I got a car. When I had a car, I was able to move. I could drive to the train yards. So I started to paint on trains, which was the ultimate goal back then. And um, well, I was quite busy at that time, so uh, it was just a matter of time when I got in touch with the police. And uh, that led back in 91, I had a court case and uh, I got a sentence. Back then the prices were very different. Today, graffiti is really um, handled as a, a serious crime thing. Back then it was like a juvenile crime thing. So my sentence was like cleaning ambulance cars for 80 hours social works and uh, 10,000 D marks, which is 5,000 euros. But back then for me it was a lot of money, so I paid like in monthly uh, rates. And um, yeah, this, uh, this is the time when my illegal graffiti career stopped, 1991. And uh, back then at that time, it was a coincidence, back in my city, Wiesbaden, Rhein-Main, near Frankfurt, we had right next to the main train station a uh, big, big area. It was uh, used formerly as a slaughter place where they used to slaughter cattle. And the place was not in use anymore. It was left for decay. So by that time, we discovered the spot. We go in there, we paint almost legally. Nobody cared about it, big buildings in decay. So the city tolerated, and um, parallel at that time was a movement in the city of Wiesbaden of uh, committed young people, and they wanted an alternative cultural center, and uh, went into the main building from the slaughter place, squatted the building, and um, started an alternative <coughs> um, cultural center. And uh, I'm gonna illustrate the first events that we organized with some photos. Some of the photos are still from the analog age, so the quality is not too good, but it will give you an impression. So yeah, the area was not in use anymore, and um, the graffiti scene discovered the spot, could paint almost legally, tolerated. We had the cultural center movement. And um, so, yeah, then mid of uh, the 90s, around 95, 96, plans of the city council got public to tear down the area. It was a very, very big area with like thousands of square meters of walls, a lot of buildings. And uh, Wiesbaden, you know, is located right in the middle of Germany, and it's pretty much the same difference when you come from Copenhagen to Wiesbaden, like when you come from Rome to Wiesbaden. So it was like in the heart of Europe. And uh, writers back then, artists, graffiti artists, we call them writers, um, could meet easily. Polish guys could meet French guys right in the middle. Uh, Danish guys could meet Italian guys right in the middle. So those people made appointments, come together and paint together. And then in the mid 90s, the, the plans of the city council got public to tear down the area. And uh, we said, like in the, the movie, we have to do something about it. And um, I had the idea of doing an international graffiti event. So I sat down, wrote a concept, and we realized the first event in 19, 97. Back then we had maybe like 60, 70 artists coming together and it attracted about uh, 1,500 people over a weekend. And it was a huge success. Back then graffiti was mostly still being criminalized and seen as vandalism. And um, I think just to judge it as vandalism is not right because there's also a very huge creative potential in it. Graffiti has a big influence in fashion, in design, in uh, creative economy. And um, I think this needs to be appreciated. And uh, you ha really have to make a difference between graffiti art and graffiti vandalism. Even vandalism can be art. 
And um, yeah, so we realized the first event in 1997 and uh, with the artists from all over Europe and was a big success, was very peaceful, very creative. And um, we did the event in 98. We had like 150 artists. We got like 3,000 visitors. And from there, it grew and grew. So the biggest event that we had was in the year 2000. We had about 300, 350 artists from all over the world coming to Wiesbaden. They, they were paying their own flights. They were paying for their own accommodation by the spray cans and just to be on this legendary event. And um, we got 14,000 visitors on this weekend. Unfortunately, when you have so many people on one area, which is located right next to the main train station, you will also have some guys jumping down to the train yard and go to ride on the trains. So the police came and protected the trains. And um, it was like a kind of hot situation, but we were lucky to calm it down and uh, had some legends. This is seen as one of the founding fathers of um, modern graffiti art. He's a very famous, well-known New York subway artist. So, yeah, we had the biggest event in the year 2000, and um, by that time, the, the Watch Street meeting was well-known all over Europe, so some of the, the guests approached me and asked me and said, well, we have to do something like this in our hometown because graffiti is being criminalized and we want to show the huge potential and bring artists together to cooperate and work together. And um, it was a good idea, it was a, a big inspiration. But to me back then, the Wall Street meeting itself was very much related to its home grounds to the Schlachthof area because this was a very unique area. Uh, I guess among Europe back then, it was the biggest graffiti gallery. So anytime you go there, you will see artists painting on some of the walls. And uh, I, I live in the city, so I've been there very frequently. And the one weekend I met some Dutch guys, the next weekend I met some Belgium guys, etc. cetera. And um, so some of the, the foreign guests approached me and said, um, well, let's bring Wall Street meeting to our hometown. And um, I sat down, I thought about it, and I came up with the title Meeting of Styles because in somehow it's related to the title Wall Street Meeting, but uh, it also yeah, has like, uh, I think a better message because like every individual is like a style of his own and uh, we're bringing those people together so it's a meeting of styles. So in 2002, we had the first event uh, series around Europe, also in Zagreb, my friend, Luna Slavn, he brought it down there. And um, it was a big success. In the first year, 2002, we had eight countries as part of it. Um, Denmark, Sweden, Belgium, Poland, Germany, Croatia, and the Netherlands. And um, people really appreciated it. All the artists appreciated it. They loved it, coming together, meeting artists from other countries, making new friends. And um, so from there, it kept on growing. 2003 was the first year we jumped over to America. New York was the first city uh, over in America in 2003 to join the Meeting of Styles. And um, then it kept on growing. Mexico the next year, Brazil the next year. And uh, now Meeting of Styles exists since 2002, and I went through the, the, the line of events, and it's been all over the, the earth, from Asia, all over Europe, to uh, North, South, Latin America. We had uh, this year the first meeting in South Africa, and um, through the years, it's been more than 300 events. And uh, the basically, Meeting of Styles is about bringing people together, artists coming together, paint big monumental walls in one act of uh, intercultural cooperation. The venues are very different. Like some of the venues are kind of small. Others are really big. Uh, the event itself, they very much 
depend on the local possibilities and um, options um, in terms of, no, there's the wrong folder, there's the one, in terms of local funds and, um, and public support. So some of the um, events are well-funded, other events are less well-funded. Like, for example, Chicago has joined Meeting of Styles about 12 years ago, and these guys never find any public funding. The city of Chicago actually is criminalizing graffiti. Even when you are a landowner and you commission some artists to paint your wall, the city of Chicago can come along and just buff it. They have the right, they have uh, a law about it. It's illegal in the inner part, in the inner city of Chicago, to carry spray cans with you. So Chicago, the city, very much um, relates graffiti to gang culture and just ignores the, the big potential of the movement. Actually, graffiti, uh, I think, is like the, the biggest art movement. You find uh, graffiti artists all over the world. Uh, people are very cosmopolite. Uh, they have a mentality of, um, yeah, cooperation, intercultural exchange. They love to travel much and uh, make new friends. And um, yeah, so events are quite different. This is in Melbourne. It's a graffiti alley that uh, was meeting of style spot last year. And um, yeah, it, uh, in, in Chicago, uh, the, the meeting actually is happening outside in uh, uh, mostly the um, east, east part of Chicago. It's a Latino neighborhood and uh, Latinos or yeah, uh, Latin Americans, they have um, a very strong relation to mural art. So it's very, very tolerated. And this is where actually the meeting of styles brought this in Chicago uh, is. And um, well, in Mexico, it's, um, I can say like historically and culturally uh, very, very strong. People have been painting walls for centuries and for decades. And uh, when you are traveling in uh, Mexico, you can see on the freeway a lot of like names written in a very easy typo, and this is advertisement for mostly mariachi bands. And um, so, in in Mexico, people are very open-minded. You can, like, on some of the meetings, they have like an open meeting. So you go and just find your wall and uh, ask the owner, and show your sketch, and if he likes it, you can paint it. And um, <clears throat> so in Mexico, actually, it's uh, the only country in the world where we have three meeting of styles. And uh, this is the underpass in Wiesbaden, the new spot that we have. And um, so, like, uh, it was in Guadalajara. We, we had one subway station in Monterrey to paint in Guadalajara. It was like a, a big, big bypass six lane road that was closed over the weekend with about 300 artists painting on the walls. Um, yeah, to get back to the development of uh, the event, um, after uh, we had the 2000 Wall Street meeting, we could not avoid the destruction of the original spot. So um, the city came and turned it down, but we were very happy that we have a big underpass uh, between the cities of Mainz and Wiesbaden, this in Guadalajara, the big bypass. And uh, we were very happy that we have this part available. It's um, a big, big underpass with the traffic circle on top and a train line going through, and it's located right next to the river and has about 3,000 square meters of walls. So um, we were happy that we could keep the meeting of styles in, in, in Wiesbaden and have another spot available. So since 2005, actually, it's happening in uh, this neighborhood of Wiesbaden. And um, it's very well, well uh, reachable. And um, this year, we had about 110 artists from 26 countries in the world coming to join the meeting of styles in Wiesbaden. 
uh, a lot of the artists uh, make use of the Wiesbaden event to enter Europe. Like you have a lot of artists from South America, they travel over to Wiesbaden, we host them, we're not able to pay for trips, but we accommodate the artists, we provide all the materials necessary, scaffolds, and um, provide food and um, nice parties. And um, so all the artists, they appreciate, they come to Wiesbaden, and from Wiesbaden they travel to other meeting of styles around uh, Europe. So uh, the event actually is following one uh, schedule every year, which is um, like spring is in Asia, and then May comes to Europe, and uh, goes on in Europe to September, goes to United States in September, and then goes down to South America. And um, we have, with the events every year, we have one motto. So uh, we also have a, a message to kick. We just don't want uh, to do like nice wall paintings, but we also want to inspire the, the visitor for the event. And um, in some of the events, artists take the motto. Like this year, the motto has been between the lines, and it refers to the ongoing fake news and uh, propaganda, especially in Germany, and uh, people spreading rumors, other people catching up the rumors and keep on spreading it. Like two years ago, when uh, yeah, we always need a crisis, uh, in Germany we had the refugee crisis, so-called refugee crisis, and uh, two years ago our motto was absolute freedom. And um, so within the graffiti world, we are traveling very much, and there is no borders, there is no uh, frontiers, there is no cultural, there might be cultural differences, but we are coming together with um, our love for art. And uh, I think this is the, the very special thing about Meeting of Styles, is that it's bringing artists and people together from all over the world. Like even some of the graffiti lovers, people who are not artists themselves, they travel to the events to take photos, to connect with the artists, to be inspired. And um, yeah, so we're happy that we could keep the meeting of styles in Wiesbaden. And actually, we had a change in the local politics a few years ago. So last year, we got awarded with the cultural prize of the city of Wiesbaden. The, the mayor of Wiesbaden is coming to the event every year. He goes around, he shakes hands, he welcomes the artists in the official uh, 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 city town hall. And um, the event is very well established. The people in the, 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 the part of the city, they contribute private walls. So we were able to, do, to expand the gallery uh, into the neighborhood and um, have a lot of visions and ideas to make it even bigger. And Castel, the, the, the meeting of uh, style spot in, in Wiesbaden, used to be very pretty before the war. And during the war, it was very heav heavily destroyed. So a lot of the buildings there are mostly from the 50s and 60s with no style and no flavor. And uh, this is the vision that we have to bring style back to the neighborhood and um, to make a lot of the walls and buildings look nicer and better. This image is from Antwerp. It's um, the first, one of the first Meeting of Styles venues in 2002. And um, yeah, Meeting of Styles has been to Croatia as well, to Zagreb, uh, at the Rotor, at the Student Center. Some of the crew has been there. And it uh, was a very nice event. There's also a huge potential of artists down here in Croatia, in the Balkans. We now have a meeting of styles in Kosovo. Uh, maybe next year we will have meeting of styles in uh, Sarajevo. We had meeting of styles in Belfast on the Peace Wall. And um, a wall that's dividing uh, Catholics and Protestants. And during the event, all these people come together and forget about their differences. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you have a question? Yes, please. 
I have some of them. Um, I don't know if you know, next year in Wiesbaden, my name is Christian Salayek, work for the German National Tourist Board in the Balkans. Next year in Wiesbaden, there's a uh, German travel market where the whole travel industry from around the world comes to Germany. And this takes place in Wiesbaden. And I would like to contact you after, afterwards. Maybe we can bring people to, to the place in Wiesbaden because I think that's an attraction of the city, definitely, for, for, a, lot of, uh, for a lot of people and can be marketed internationally. That would be uh, very nice. Actually, um, I, I do um, uh, tours at the venue. Uh, I've done a tour recently with like 50 people. And uh, I was surprised it was part of a cultural program that's going on around those neighborhoods. And the execution was one part of it. And uh, I was really surprised about the, the audience. The, the average age during the tour was probably like 60 was a lot of elderly people. Uh, at the same time, like people come all year long, they come to the spot like some years ago, uh, what was his name, uh, the, the Israeli Prime Minister uh, Rabin. Rabin, he was in Mainz uh, to visit the, 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 the mayor and the minister of the um, uh, country, uh, Rheinland-Pfalz, and his wife, is very interested in art and street art, and they came over to the venue to uh, take a look with bodyguards and everything, but um, it is always good to uh, expand and to increase the traffic because this is what we're looking for. I mean, at the GTM you have 500 journalists for all over, from all over the world and 500 travel agents, so it's, there are around 1,000 people. We would have to discuss how, how, yeah. how many are interested and so on. Did you have an event in Bucharest? Ever? In uh, Bucharest, Romania, not yet. Um, the, the meeting of styles very much uh, depends on the locals. So me as the founder, for me, it's impossible to organize a meeting of styles in Bucharest. I need a, a, a good local organizer, well connected, with the right heart. So uh, through the years, I got requests to organize a meeting here and there. And then the second question was like, okay, how much do you pay? Uh, well, I pay, I can't pay for the organization. I'm, we, we are not a big label, we are not a big company. So everybody needs to find his uh, own funds. And uh, I think also in, in, in Bucharest, it should be possible to get like support from the European Union. There's a lot of possibilities. You just have to go for it, take the time, write the applications and um, yeah, look for the budget, like most of the ar organizers actually do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much. My name is Diana Madunic, and my, I am the Swedish ambassador to Croatia. Uh, excuse my non-knowledge about these things. I only have very little experience. I have this wall in Stockholm uh, on my way back to home after the office hours, and every now and then there, are, there is graffiti on the wall, and the next day it's cleaned out. Uh, so, um, uh, But one thing I've been wondering about, about this graffiti, apart from the art uh, uh, aspect, there are very often all these letters written on the wall. And uh, what annoys me that I don't understand what the meaning of those letters. Uh, it's not a word, it's just a combination of, of letters. And I'm always wondering, does it stand for something or is it just like that? And my second question would be related to what you, something you said in the beginning. You said guys came down to Wiesbaden from Copenhagen and guys came up from, to Wiesbaden from... from Zagreb, of course, I will ask you, what about the girls then, or the women? Is this mainly a, fem a male thing, or are there also female girls involved in the thing? Thank you very much. Well, the, the scribblings that you refer to is uh, the, the taggings. It's called tagging. This is uh, the way actually it started when I was, uh, when I was talking about the, the roots of modern graffiti. Uh, was uh, in the 60s when kids from poor neighborhoods were writing their names in simple letters all over. So it's like, you can say it's like dogs marking their territory. Uh, it's mostly um, pseudonyms, names, street names, nicknames, 
are its crew names. So when you have like three or four letters like WSR or CNB or whatever, it's like a, um, a crew of uh, illegal graffiti guys. And if you have like those letterings, sometimes they, they also have um, some artistic uh, component in it. Uh, we call it style. And sometimes it's just scribbling. We call it toys. And uh, there's like within the graffiti culture, there's, um, let's say, like a hierarchy of different um, style elements. So the lowest form is the tag. The, the next form is the throw up. Throw up goes over a tag. And a throw up is like an easily um, fast done uh, bubble style lettering. And then you have um, the piece, which is more complex and it has more styles and fill-ins. And um, unfortunately, in these days, you have a lot of kids tagging and scribbling, but they don't know anything about graffiti culture. And uh, a second question, it's, um, it's mostly a, a male discipline still, probably because of the illegal roots and history, but there's more and more women. So within the, I can say like within the last 10 years, more and more women are becoming part of the legal graffiti scene. For sure, there's also women who paint illegal but the majority just paints uh, legal and is bringing own flavors, own styles. And uh, at a lot of the meeting of styles, we're looking also for women to, to open the, the, the walls, to have them participate, to support uh, women in artists. I think that the, the, the fact that there's uh, increasingly more women in the graffiti scene probably also comes from workshops that have been done in the past decade or after the 2000 um, workshops from youth centers. Uh, sometimes they're even part of meeting of styles and uh, teaching kids. And um, from my experience, the workshops that I do, uh, most of the girls are more focused in painting and creativity than the boys in that age from 12 to 16. Girls are better workshop participants from my experience. Sorry, one more question. Do you have any connection to Urban Nation in Berlin? Because I saw that they tried to bring graffiti as an art, so they bring graffiti works inside the building as a gallery. Um, and okay, the whole street, the Bülowstrasse in Berlin is actually the half of the street is actually like a gallery. All the buildings are painted by pretty famous uh, um, graffiti artists from all over the world. I think they had a meeting there where they brought everybody in. Well, Berlin is... Uh in these days is like the, the capital of graffiti in Germany and I guess pretty much around Europe. It's a very strong illegal scene. It's a, a very strong legal scene. It's a very, very diverse. So uh, you have this term street art, which is kind of hype right now. Uh, and street art kind of like summarizes all those different medias. Like it started with the traditional way of graffiti but um, then there, there were more and more different uh, inspirations uh, uh, coming into the wall painting from graphical designers, from mural painting, different medias, etc. And um, this also opened a lot of doors. So you have a lot of like photorealistic stuff. And uh, Berlin in, in, in Germany is, um, I would say, the city that's most open and tolerant because Berlin also has uh, a street and youth crime problem. And um, there is a very, very strong alternative uh, um, uh, component uh, within the city. And um, this is why there is happening uh, very, very much beside of the, the, the galleries that you mentioned, the, the house uh, project that they had. And um, it's, it's a, a big inspiration for all the artists all over Germany, and I guess the, the impact also across Europe. Thank you. Ukoliko više nema pitanja, zahvalimo pljesko, Manuela. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Good luck uh, in all of your future projects.
Hvala. And especially with this one. E, nema na čemu. E, dami gospodo, ovo je bio kraj posljednjega predavanja koji je na raspored u ovoj dvorani danas. Thank you very much to both uh, German and French embassies, uh, to the French Institute and the German Tourist Board for organizing this and partnering with the festival and bringing exquisite speakers here to this hall. Thank you so much again for sharing your experience and your projects. Uh, hvala svima vama koji ste ostali ovdje do kraja. Nemam vam drugo što za reći osim vidimo se sutra, počinjemo ovdje u 10 sati sa panelom Hrvatske turističke zajednice, no nemojte odmah pobjeći odavdje jer u 18 sati spremamo jedno malo neformalnije druženje i koktel ovih dviju ambasada i turističke zajednice i francuskog instituta gdje možemo jedan na jedan onda popričati malo s drugima i podijeliti svoje dojmove o svim ovim prezentacijama koje smo danas čuli. Hvala vam najljepše još jednom, ugodan ostatak poslije podneva i večeri i noći i jutra i sretno buđenje sutra. O, spontana rima. Ćao ljudi.